about a shed vlog, but I am uh, making something. Today, I am making some cheese. This cheese making thing is brief periods of activity followed by long periods of waiting in between. Step one is you warm up your milk and you put in your culture and you let it acidify and you wait for 45 minutes or an hour. And you put in your calcium chloride and your rennet, you stir it for a minute, you let it sit for 45 minutes. And then we're gonna cut the curds and then they're gonna sit for a few minutes. It just goes on like that. So all together, this will take me about six hours from start to finish, but it's not like your six hours of constant activity. It's brief periods of activity and go on about your day in the meantime, just keep an eye on the clock. I'm just at home on a Saturday doing my chores and I thought, why not? I'll make another cheese and uh, take you along with me. The whole reason I'm doing this is because every cheese making video you see is with these massive amounts of milk and a lot of people want to try this, but they don't want to be, you know, investing a lot of money, buying a lot of fancy tools and using three gallons of milk, which would take a pot much larger than this one. This one barely holds two gallons, just barely. Behind me here on my counter, I have my press, which is new, so ooh, I don't know how it's gonna work. I've been kind of MacGyvering a press. All right, MacGyver, think. So this has gotta be better than what I had before. Um, I have all my equipment laid out here. I've got my calcium chloride pellets. I've got my non-chlorinated quarter cups of water measured out. I've got some kosher salt ready to go. I have some dry cheesecloth and I have another cheesecloth that I've boiled and it is just standing here in this warm water. I'm gonna wring it out uh, right before I'm ready to use it. And right here I have a paper towel and vinegar that I use to clean my hands and my utensils. It's just doused in white vinegar, great for disinfecting. This is another boiled cheesecloth that I've already wrung out and it is going to be the one that I dip in whey and put into the mold when I'm pressing my cheese. I saw some other lady do that and it helped her cheesecloth not stick to the pressed cheese. Now I have gone ahead and gotten a few other things started. I boiled those cheesecloths, boiled them for 10 minutes. You want that because you want everything you use for cheese ma making to be immaculately clean. Clean, 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 clean. I some sometimes will boil things but I generally just wash everything if you have a dishwasher with a sterilized function you can do that and then before I'm ready to use my tools I just give them a wipe with some white vinegar it makes everything very very clean I also have on the stove one gallon of whole pasteurized milk not ultra pasteurized ultra pasteurized milk will not work for cheese making at all pasteurized milk is fine i brought my milk up to 86 degrees which is just barely warm to your finger it even still cool but it was 86 degrees at 86 degrees i added one cup of cultured buttermilk because obviously pasteurization pasture is up you 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 could you do pasteurizing milk kills the bacteria right so you need to add some good bacteria back and good bacteria comes from yogurt plain cultured yogurt you can use cultured buttermilk at 86 degrees I put in one cup of cultured buttermilk I put the lid on it you know obviously turned the heat off draped a towel over and what that does is it cultures and acidifies your gallon of whole milk and this has been sitting here for 45 minutes so i'm ready to move on to my next my next step and the next step is i'm gonna put my calcium chloride in my quarter cup of water i'm gonna get my rennet out of the fridge and put a quarter teaspoon in a quarter cup of uh, just bottled spring water it needs to be non-chlorinated uh, to add the calcium chloride to your water. I don't know what happens if it's not. I don't know the science behind that, but that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this in here and let it dissolve and mix it up, and then I'm gonna grab my rennet. This is the rennet that I use. It is animal rennet, 
and this again is going to be one quarter teaspoon of these drops in one quarter cup of water. We're not going to turn the fire on, but I do have my oven on and it's warm back here. So after you add your rennet, you don't want to disturb it, the milk at all. It needs to set very still. So let me grab my stuff over here. We always, always add the rennet last. This is the calcium chloride in one quarter cup of water. Just give that a stir. It's just looking to see the time. Uh, when you add your rennet, you're gonna stir for one minute and no more because this starts to work very quickly and when you add it, you wanna add it, stir it, and then you're gonna put the lid on and leave it sit for 45 more minutes. So I'm just giving this a stir, and you want to stir it gently. Okay. The lid on, cover it back up with its towel to keep it nice and warm. And this will sit for about 45 minutes. I'll come back and check it at 30 minutes for a clean break. And I'll show you what that means uh, when we come back. We're just gonna leave it alone and see how we do. During this period of waiting after I've put in the rennet, I am gonna get my colander ready for when I'm ready to drain the curds here later. What I'm gonna do is just wring this cloth out and drape it in this colander and set this over here in the sink. Ta-da! So I tucked my edges of my cheesecloth around and tucked them in because when I pour the cheese curds in here, when they're ready to drain here in a bit, I don't want the edges of my cheesecloth to pull in there with them. I had that happen once and it's super annoying. So anyway, this is ready. So I will sit it in the sink for later. A few moments later. Time to cut the curds. What we're doing here is we're going to check for a clean break. And what that means is I've got my knife and I'm going to poke it down in here and kind of pull back. And you see how that breaks in a really clean line there? These are very ready to cut. What you do is you take your knife and go all the way down to the bottom. And for cheddar, I'm gonna cut these into about half inch curds is what I'm going for here. Cut this way. Be sure to go all the way to the bottom. And then cut this way, all the way to the bottom. And take your time with this. Don't be rough with your cheese. Okay. I'm gonna pull this forward. Oh, it jiggles so delightfully. Pull it forward on the on the burner because I'm gonna need that here in a bit. I'm also gonna run my knife around the edge. So, what's the object of the game here? The object of the game is to cut these curds because you're making more surface area on the curds that you that you've made. And just put the lid back on. We're gonna let this sit for about 15 minutes because now that you've made all this surface area on these curds, it's gonna release a bunch of whey and when we come back here in 15 or 20 minutes, you're gonna see how much whey has come up to the surface. Okay, now at this point, as you can see, cutting those curds, all the whey is releasing from the curds and it has separated the long columns that you've created when you cut your curds. I have a spoon. This portion of cheese making is probably the most daunting and the most activity that 
you're gonna have. It's also very important that you do this properly. At this point, you absolutely cannot hurry. The curds have been cut. They've set for actually like 30 minutes. The whey is releasing from these curds and this is the most activity that you're gonna have with this cheese mace making process. This part is slow and it needs to be slow and you need to take your time and you cannot hurry it. This process is breaking up and cooking the curds. They've healed, which is what this is called after you cut them and let them rest. They've healed. Now it's time to cook them. We're going to bring these up very slowly to 100 degrees, between 100 and 110. I see different recipes. I'm going to err on the side of not overcooking them because I don't want them to be really tough and grody. So obviously when you cut them before, they're in long columns now, right? So we're gonna slowly stir them, gently stir them. They're very fragile. I'm gonna turn the fire on to very low. And then this process is going to take about 30 minutes. You can see how fragile these are just bringing my spoon along and cutting and beginning the warming process. Some people do this with their hands. I'm not going to do that. You want to be very gentle at this stage because you can see how fragile these are and you don't want to shatter your curds. As you stir them, you just cut them up and over the course of about 30 minutes, I'm gonna bring them up to 100 degrees. I'll come back a few times over the course of this 30 minutes or so until I get to the right temperature and I'll show you the difference at different time increments. This is after about five minutes of just gently stirring and lifting the curds. And when I find a big one like that, I just cut it. And even after just this few minutes of doing this, the texture of these curds is changing. They went from being like pudding or jiggly custard to being more like a medium firm boiled egg white is what their texture is at this point. Just continue this process over a little bit longer until I get to my desired temperature. We'll come back here in a few minutes when I've stirred so gently and I want my curds to wind up being about the size of uh, kernels of corn. I'm just about there. This is looking really good. I've brought my temperature slowly up to 100. So what we're gonna do is turn the fire off, take the thermometer out of the way, lid on, pull it back up here where I could really kind of get to it. And I'm gonna let these curds fall to the bottom and the whey come up to the top. And I'm gonna let these sit for another probably 20 or 30 minutes. We do want them to stay warm. So I'm gonna cover them back up with the towel to keep them nice and warm. And we'll come back in about 15 minutes. And y'all be sure, no matter if you have an electric stove or a gas stove or a hot plate or a skillet or whatever you are using to do this. If you are draping your pot with a towel, make sure the burners are off. Double check, triple check. Don't burn your house down. Turn off the burners before you drape your towel over your thing and make sure, if you, especially if you're using an electric stove, 
that you don't put your towel over too soon or if you do that it doesn't touch the burner because this will start a fire and you will go from cheese making to fireman calling and nobody needs that okay so it's been about 15 20 minutes and there is a lot of way on top of here that goes really deep it's like being in a lake where you can't quite see the bottom you can't see how deep that is so I'm going to stir this to break up any matting that may have occurred while it rested uh, matting is when your curds at this point clump together and you don't want that so just give them a stir gently gently again see that see those little clumps that's matting and that's because of the coagulation coagulation effects of the rennet it makes things clump together that's what coagulation actually is so just break up your little clumps and then we're going to transfer this stuff to the colander with cheesecloth that I prepared earlier. So here I have my colander and I have my pot of cheese curds. I'm going to pour this giant pot into here. Wish me luck. Okay, I need to do a transfer here because I need this way for the cheddaring process. So I have my pan, I'm gonna pour this into here and then put this back on the stove. And I only wanna put about this much in there, uh, maybe even a little less. I just want to kind of make a, a water bath kind of thing, kind of situation to keep my curds warm here in a minute because I don't want them to sit in the in the way and you'll see what I mean by that in a minute. Pop the colander back in my bowl and then continue to pour out your way. And now here comes the mass of curds. Do this real slowly. Ah, or you're gonna have quite the mess because it'll make a big splash. So right now when I feel these with my hand, they're very soft, but springy. So now that I've got these in here, I don't want them to sit there and rest in that way. So I'm going to pick up the edges of my cheesecloth, get those curds up out of the way, and I want to gather my cheesecloth and kind of give it a twist. My hands are also very clean. Before I handle do anything with my cheese, I wash my hands with soap and water and then I also give them a wipe with my vinegar soaked paper towel. My hands are super clean. Some people use gloves for this, I don't. I need to be able to feel things with my hands. Just wash your hands, people gonna sit this in its little colander and over my my empty pot that these curds came out of I'm just gonna sit this colander and now I'm gonna let my curds drain for about 20 or 30 minutes and whey is gonna leak out of there I am gonna move it back over to the stove where these curds will stay warm I want these to be kind of warm during this process and stay that way This way I will put in bags and freeze. The way that I put in this pot, I am going to turn the burner on and warm it up and just keep it warm. I'm just gonna put it on a low heat to keep it at this 100 degree-ish mark. I really want it to stay warm because I am going to set my cheese over the top of this here in a few minutes and that begins the cheddaring process. I'm gonna let my curds sit for
for 15, 20 minutes, and this is going to stay warm. So my pot of whey is about 100 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and take the thermometer out, get it out of the way. The whey. My colander of cheese over here and unwrap it from its cheesecloth and you can see it's starting to knit together. Now my cheese is going to be white. People's cheese are yellow because they put a natto usually. A natto has no flavor. It just gives cheddar cheese that kind of orange color. Again with my really clean hands I'm handling this. I'm going to put this over this warm pot of whey and again cover it up with my clean towel. The burner is off. I'm just going to cover it up to keep it warm and every 15 minutes for an hour and a half I'm going to come back and flip it over. And that is the cheddaring process. I mentioned earlier that I would be taking my cheesecloth that I boiled earlier and dipping it in whey before I put it in my mold. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now to prepare for when my curds are ready. And I do apologize. I was concentrating on what I was doing so much that I forgot to explain what I was doing here, which is trying to evenly get this cheesecloth in this mold and drape it over nicely and even out the wrinkles. A few moments later. This is flip number three. I need to write it on my little grease board over here, which number I'm on so that I keep track of when I'm doing this. I wanna flip this a total of seven times, waiting 15 minutes between each flip as this uh, cheese mass sits over my warm pan of whey. This is how I flip it. Again, clean hands. back up with a clean towel. We're going to do that a few more times. This has been flipped over a total of seven times over the course of about an hour and 45 minutes with 15 minutes in between each flip. Now this is still warm so I want to work quickly because this will work better if I work pretty quickly the warmer they are, the better they press. So I'm gonna put these on a little cutting board that I've wiped down with vinegar, it's very clean. And I'm gonna, with a clean knife, cut these, much like I did when I cut the curds the very first time, just into cubes. always easier to turn the cutting board rather than the thing you're cutting. Hey honey! Hey sweetie, will you come and help me for two seconds? I need a cameraman! I have a cameraman! My husband came to my rescue and is filming me. So you take your curds, put them into a big bowl, and you can see there's still, there's whey coming out as you're doing this. I'm gonna grab about a tablespoon and a half of salt. You wanna use kosher salt, not iodized salt, because if you use iodized salt and you intend to store this for a while, it will go rancid before your kosher salt leaks. So your kosher salt with no iodine keeps longer. And this is the way that I measure. I know that that is a tablespoon in my hand, very clean hands. 
that's one and about a half tablespoons. The more salt you put in, the more whey is gonna come out. So now with very clean hands, I'm just going to mill this salt into my curds and I'm going to break them up. And by the end of this process, after you've mixed this very, very, very well, you want your cheese curds to wind up looking like scrambled eggs. And that's what my curds look like after I have milled the salt into them. And now I'm going to put them into the mold. I can't stress enough how important it is that you use clean hands for this, clean utensils for this, clean everything for this. this sitting on the cutting board that I cut my cheese on because this is a brand new thing and it didn't come finished and I don't want for the wood to get wet and split and ruin my brand new cheese press so yeah this cheesecloth was intentionally long enough so that I can pull this top bit up without folding over this spare end and making, because I wouldn't be able to pull it all the way back, so it would make a wrinkle in the top of my cheese. And the whole thing here is to avoid wrinkles, divots, etc. Your end goal is for this to be extremely well knit. So I intentionally used this very long piece of cheesecloth so that I can pull the spare end back over without doubling the, the end end back over and spoiling the top of my cheese with a big wrinkle. So now what I do is take the follower that came with this mold Place it on top in the very center. Kind of press it down and wiggle it down, like level off the top of your cheese. Put the top of my mold on. And then I'm going to grab my weights. Round one of weights. This is going to be 15 pounds, and I'm going to press this for 30 minutes, and then I'll come back flip the cheese over and press it for another 30 minutes and then I'll increase the weight. I have shifted my press and weights around so that this sits over a ball to catch this extra weight and just drain that off so it doesn't spoil my board. And this is exactly what I want. I want it to come out very quickly at first and then pretty much stop. And then it's just going to weep out of the bottom of the press. So that will be for about 30 minutes. And then I'll come back and flip this over and press it at this same weight for another 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes. Take out the follower. Pull up. And these curds are knitting together beautifully. I'm going to flip this over. And I 
as you can see, this has almost halved in size. And that's exactly what you want. Wrap this back up. Pressing 15 pounds on each side for 30 minutes. We're going to flip it again and redress it like I did before and increase the weight. And it's looking just exactly like I want it to. Can you see how it's all knitting together? I think you can see it better on the side. Dun, 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 dun. Now we're up to 30 pounds and this will be for one hour. I'll flip it, redress it, and press it at this weight again for another hour. Next to last flip. So you can see how smooth this is getting all the way around. All those little curd cracks are knitting up. The only little crevices are from the cheesecloth, really. I'm going to redress it again with the cheesecloth and increase the weight to 40 or 50 pounds, depending on how high I can stack my weights for my press. I am still having to do a little bit of MacGyver work. Because I don't have quite enough weights. skills. Got my cheese redressed, wrapped in here. This is 30 pounds. This is another 40 and a gallon of water weighs about another eight and a half, nine pounds. So all together, this is 50 pounds of weight. This is going to sit here for six hours. I'm going to set an alarm, get up in the night. I will put it flipped over back in the mold, put this amount of weight on it, and let it go for another six hours. I want 12 hours total at this weight. So this is the next to last pressing. See my cheese over there? It has been pressing overnight. I got up in the night, flipped it over once. This is 50 pounds. I am very excited to get this baby unstacked, unwrapped, and uh, we're gonna see how I did and then move on to, yeah, the next step. I'm excited. Here we go. Yeah. So you see how that is all knit together and there aren't any cracks. So now what happens with this is I am going to put it on like a cookie sheet rack and cover it with a clean cheesecloth so nothing is going to get in it or on it. 
and it is going to air dry at room temperature for two or three days. What I'm gonna be looking for there is for this to develop kind of a rind, which just means the outside starts to get hard. If you start to see it cracking or anything, you wanna vacuum seal it and put it in the fridge. Another thing with this, you do want to flip this every 12 hours while it's sitting out air drying. I'm just gonna get this set up and covered and it's gonna sit around on the counter for a couple, three days. I'm gonna turn it twice a day and I'll show you, you know, how that goes. And there she is. I lined a cookie sheet with some foil. I put one of those cookie cooling, you know, racks, a small one. And then I draped my cheese with a cheesecloth just to keep, like I said, dust and pet hair. You don't want that stuff on your cheese. So this will just sit here. I'm gonna turn it over, like I said, twice a day and recover it. My cheese has been resting on its rack for about 12 hours, so I'm going to give it its first flip. This feels nice and dry already. There's a little spot of something here. So I lifted that little spot out with a clean spoon, and I'm going to give it just a little spritz with some vinegar and rub that spot over. I think it was just maybe spot from the grate here, but just in case it was a little something unpleasant, I dug it out, sprayed it with some vinegar, and now I have a paper towel. I'm gonna dry that off. It's just gonna keep resting. Again, I'm just gonna turn it over every 12 hours and cover it back up for another 48 hours. This is 24 hours after drying my cheese. I've already flipped it for today. And I think that this that I picked out yesterday is just going to be on the outside and on the rind. So I'm not going to sweat at that too much. But I am very pleased at how this looks. This is drying out really, really nicely. Yay! Okay. Here's my finished cheese. Sadly, there was a mark on my grate, so it made a couple little spots on my cheese, but that's okay. It's not mold or anything. It's just a spot on the surface. I'm not gonna eat the rind anyway. I am going to freezer seal this baby, and then it will go into the refrigerator to age for at least 30 days. Probably I'm gonna leave this in there for more like 60 days, and then I'll crack it open and try it, so. We'll see here in a couple months how it turned out and hope for the best. So now I've got her all vacuum sealed up and she'll go into the fridge and there she'll live for two months. Uh, we'll come back in a couple of months and post a little update on how it turned out and whether it was good or gross and a total waste of time. I hope it wasn't the second one. And don't forget to write the date the day that you put it in and the day you expect to get it out. And it's also handy to put a reminder on your phone. Don't forget about it. Write the date on it and put a reminder where you will remember. This is my cheese after aging it for a couple of weeks in the fridge. It's looking pretty good. It feels good. It looks right. So just a little bit more time and then I'll be able to try it. But this is my cheese after a couple of weeks of being in the bottom drawer of the refrigerator and I'm just gonna keep aging it. A few moments later. Okay, so it's been almost 30 days, not quite. And we're gonna try this. I have a guinea pig. My husband has volunteered to help me out with this little tasting. I'm gonna open it up and we're gonna slice it and we're gonna see how it tastes. There he is! Thank you. Let's smell it and see if it smells good or sour. You want to go first? Sure. It just smells like cheese. Yeah. Oh gosh. Is it tough cheese? It's real hard. Good. Nice. <laughs> 
looks neat inside. Can you see it? Yeah, it just smells kind of cheesy. Yeah. Okay, the big reveal. Cheese. Cheers. 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 It just tastes kind of like, like a Havarti, really. Like a real mild cheese, mm -hmm. a little bit salty, but not too salty. Um, it's got a real firm texture. When you, it like breaks. I bet this would be good for like a grating cheese. Like mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. you know, I think because I crumbled the curds instead of leaving them in cubes, I think what I've made myself right here is kind of a Parmesan. It's, it's pretty hard. I think that it's if I really aged good. this a lot longer, because mm -hmm. mm. as you eat it more, it gets a little sharper. Mm -hmm. At it's first, good. it's very underwhelming, and you're like, eh, nah. But it gets better as you eat it. It really does. And you know what it is? I'm getting toward the outside part, mm -hmm. and that's the part that tastes better. Yeah. I'm going to re-vacuum seal this and put this, you know, one big hunk back in the fridge and let it keep aging for a while. It'll be fine. And then we'll use the other half. So I get one bite and then it vacuum seals? No, you get, you get uh -huh. a whole half. I'm only going to vacuum seal half. The other half is for us. Too late. Thank you. You're welcome. What are you going to sport? It's not bad. I do like it more the more that I eat it. It's pretty good. A little pat on the back for myself. I'm gonna keep up with this cheese thing because gum, that's pretty good. You should try to make your own cheese at home. Don't be scared, it's not that hard. It just takes a little time. Thanks for sticking around and watching this super long video. And I hope that you enjoyed watching me make some cheese. And hey, if you stuck around this long, stick around for a few more minutes because at the end of this, I have slipped in some deleted scenes and bloopers that you might also enjoy. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up because I just really like that and appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. Have a great rest of your day. I have a dog who loves little cheese curds like this, so I will just put those aside for him. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Oh, that's all that that's all there is for now. What is calcium chloride? I don't know. What it does to the milk is it adds some of the calcium back that is lost in the pasteurization process. I don't know what it is, but I think it's probably calcium and chloride. Just gonna go out on a limb there and make a guess. You can look up yourself what it is. Hey, leave a comment below and tell me what it is. I wanna see if I'm right. Is it calcium and chloride? <laughs> we return you now to your regularly scheduled program. So. What is rennet? Rennet comes from the stomach lining of unweaned mammals. Not gonna get into the politics of that. Some people have an opinion. I not here to share mine on that. And I don't care to hear yours on it. But anyway, that's where it comes from. This was discovered like way back in the ancient days when some sheep herder discovered, hey, the stomach lining of this baby goat that I killed is real good for transporting this milk. And then when they got where they were going, they discovered that their milk had turned solid. So not so great for them because they wanted milk, not cheese, but great for the rest of history of the world because cheese, man, cheese. I mean, if you put cheese or gravy on kind of anything, you can eat it, right? I mean, put cheese on it. You can eat it. It's fine. Rennet makes your milk coagulate. So that's
that's what it is, that's where it comes from, and that's what it does. The door sign. He didn't mean to. But, uh -huh. So I've tried to get as many of the wrinkles out as possible and this will just sit here while my dog barks and be ready for my cheese curds. This is whey. The, a whey is a byproduct of making cheese. I use it to fertilize my plants. I mix this one part whey to six parts water thereabouts and fertilize my plants with it. They absolutely love it. I gave some to my folks for their chickens. Come winter time, if I'm still making cheese, I will freeze this into ice cubes and add it to soups and stews. So, whey is a very useful product. Uh, if you're making cheese, don't just throw it away. Make room in your freezer for it and hang on to it. Please stand by. She kind of looks like that scene from A Golden Child when that lady is all draped in gauze and they're trying not to let the sun set on her. It, it reminds me of that. So <laughs> she's all entombed, just waiting for her time. I have slipped in some deleted sleeve. The, the, I have slipped in some deleted sleeve. See, huh.